More than 2 billion people in the world live on dietary cultures where insects are eaten as part of their traditions. Since insects are found abundantly in nature, they can help address food and feed security. In Kenya, cricket farming has been gaining popularity since 2014 with farms being set up in various regions with the help of researchers from Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. The domesticated house cricket and the field cricket are the most popularly reared cricket species in Kenya. This is because of their superior taste and texture. Dr. John Kinyuru, also known as the Cricket Man, is a food and nutrition scientist who has been doing cricket farming at the institution for the past 12 years. Today, Dr. John takes us through cricket farming. My name is Dr. John Kinyuru. I'm a food and nutrition scientist from JQuat. Uh, here they call me the, the cricket guru, the cricket man, because I've been farming crickets mainly and other insects for the last 10 years plus. So we started farming or researching on insects over 10 years ago, actually 12 years ago, from 2006 is when we started thinking of exploiting alternative sources of food for humans and even animals. So when we look around, we realize that there are a lot of insects that live amongst us. And from statistics, you realize that insects are the majority in the animal kingdom. We have more insects than humans all over. And when you even look at our traditions, you realize that insects were part of the human diet. Recently, actually, archaeologists actually discovered in our, one of our archaeological sites in Naivasha, this in a place called Kariadusi. They actually discovered that the early man in Kariadusi ate insects. They actually ate termites from the fossil studies. So, uh, so you see that insects were part of the human diet from a very long time ago. And even recently, recent past, you realize that people from Western Kenya, from some parts of Central Kenya, even coast, were eating insects for food are using insects for food. And when you again look at animals, a chicken is usually very happy when it's running after an insect. Yeah? They, they actually prefer eating a live insect as compared to the commercial feeds we give them. Which tells you there is something about insects that we need to exploit. They are nutritious, they taste nice. That chicken wouldn't be running after that insect if it never tasted nice to it. Yeah? So the fact that we have a lot of history with edible insects. Made us start thinking, well, probably this is the time to start exploiting this critical resource that we have around us for, for human food and even animal feed. So that's what got us thinking. If you're like most people, you may get appalled at the thought of eating insects. Visions of consuming crawling or flying insects may be quite disgusting. But as Dr. Kinyuru tells us, it isn't as bad. Eating insects is more common than many of us might know. Researchers like Dr. Kinyuru say that these bugs are actually a healthy and sustainable alternative to animal protein. The reason for establishment of the farm at Jaquat was to upscale cricket farming in Kenya to foster food and nutrition security with the mass production of the insects commonly available is also primed to produce animal feeds. Cricket farming is a cycle from the hatching of eggs to the point of maturity and egg laying again. This is Jaquat Insect Farm. And the reason why this farm was established is to serve as a training ground for farmers, where we, we like set an, a center of excellence on consumption, on, on production and consumption of insects. And right here is a cricket project. So here we produce crickets right from eggs, we hatch the eggs, we get the, the pinheads, the pinheads are the very small ones, we rear them until they mature to wherever where they can be harvested for animal feed or human food or to a time where we, they start laying eggs again and we start collecting eggs. Since cricket farming began, farmers have welcomed the idea. This art of insect rearing for commercial purposes originated from the Netherlands but has now spread to different parts of the world. 
Dr. Kinyuru says that they bring farmers to their demo farm to teach them how they can start cricket farming in their backyard. Since crickets love darkness, they need a dark place to hide, and cartons or egg trays are recommended while making a home for these creatures. In terms of space, cricket farming saves a lot since one can rear a large number of these insects on a small piece of land as compared to other animals. Uh, the facility we have here is actually supposed to be for large-scale commercial production. But it's like what we would call the high end. Yeah. So we bring farmers here, we show them that yes, you can farm crickets, and this is a large-scale pen system, but we also show them in your backyard, in your small ways, you can use smaller ways of production of farming crickets. You can farm using boxes, small boxes, cartons. Yeah, it doesn't have to be this huge. But the bottom line is, you need to to have a place where the insects will hide, what we call a pen. So here we use egg trays to have them as hiding places. Crickets naturally don't like light. They like to hide under there, some hidden places. So we give them the trays so that they can hide. So under there, they hide there, they mate there, then they lay eggs. They only come out when they want to feed. For a farmer to begin cricket farming, one needs to ensure that the environment is conducive for their existence. They are reared in concrete pens or boxes that have egg trays aligned to provide the dark environment for hiding. Yeah. So you just need very simple implements or very simple structure, a box to prevent them from running away or to keep them from running away, to keep predators like uh, lizards and spiders away. Once the male crickets stridulate, Plates containing a thin layer of moist cotton wool are placed in the pens and the female lay eggs within 24 hours. The egg laying duration lasts between 7 and 14 days. Crickets have three stages in their life cycle, the egg, the nymph and the adult. The eggs take between 7 and 14 days to hatch depending on the environment. If the environment is warm, the eggs hatch much faster as compared to when it's cold. Naturally, the eggs hatch into equal number of male and female crickets. For example, if a farmer incubates 100 cricket eggs, he is likely to get 50 female crickets and 50 male crickets. Feeding of the crickets is easy and it's not capital intensive as they feed on garden and kitchen waste. Alternatively, they can be fed on high protein commercial feeds such as broiler's mush and layer's mush until they reach maturity and begin to lay eggs. You, very, you, you do very little in terms of how they breed because all you need is eggs. Naturally, you find that eggs hatch from two weeks, eggs will start hatching. From two egg, weeks, eggs from two weeks, depending on the weather. If it's so very warm like now, in two weeks they'll start hatching. If it's cold, it can take a month, up to a month, sometimes even more if you're in very cold areas. But once they start hatching, you realize that they hatch almost 50-50, 50 males, 50 females. Natural process. Yeah. Then, uh, when they hatch, you start feeding them. We, we've developed a special diet for them, high protein diet. You can even give them broiler mash from chicken. Until they're about a month after that, you can give, start giving them layers mash, which is still high protein or lower protein. However, with the cricket feed that we have formulated, you don't have to use all those cricket, I mean chicken feeds. But for people out there, they, you can use that. So in two months, they are adults. They are hatching, they are laying their own eggs. They are hatching. You, you have new hatchlings, you can then harvest them for consumption. So it's as simple as that. It's not complicated. And we don't use complicated ways to incubate the eggs. We just leave the eggs in a warm place. Cover them as long as they are moist. Covered in a warm place. Just make sure they are they are moist. You, you're good to go. They'll hatch. From two weeks you start seeing hatching. In cold areas you might have to make the place a little warm. You can put a jiko in there, whatever, to, to, to make sure they keep warm. Yeah. You can use 
uh, waste from the farm, waste from kitchen. However, we've also formulated a cricket feed, which is specifically for cricket, using cereals and leaves and other ingredients to have a, an optimized feed for cricket. So we have that already. However, even without that commercial feed for cricket, you can feed your insects on waste from your farm, from your kitchen. So they are not expensive. Yeah, A simple box in your backyard, you have your kitchen waste, you have your leftovers, food leftovers, and your crickets will be more than happy to munch away the maembes, the, pie, the, the popo peels, the potato peels, cabbage leaves, leftovers, and etc. So it helps you to manage your waste, but also produce high quality protein. Hygiene and aeration is of utmost importance when it comes to cricket rearing. At the moment, the risk of disease is almost non-existent, but with the increase in cricket population, diseases are likely to arise. Failure to aerate the feeds, fungi contamination, and molding in the eggs is bound to happen. If one does not consider such security measures, one could lose their cricket investment within the blink of an eye. Suppose we just reduce or we replace only 10% of that with cricket, because that's what we are saying. We need, we need uh, five tons a day of crickets to feed just the 50 millers, small millers in Nairobi only. Yeah. The challenge has actually been producing enough to feed the animal feed market, because they need, they need a lot of numbers. However, our strategy to enter the animal feed market has been using the small agrovets, where we sell to them crickets, powder, crickets, crickets, whole crickets or cricket powder, and then they sell the crickets as a supplement, just like the way they sell sunflower cake, the way they sell omena. In their natural environment, crickets lay their eggs in soil which is warm and moist. While undertaking cricket farming, Dr. Kinyuru advises that one needs to mimic this kind of environment by using damp cotton wool. The crickets then lay their eggs and incubate them in a warm environment. We use cotton wool to harvest the eggs from them. That's where they lay the eggs. Yeah. You know, naturally, crickets in the field, they lay their eggs in the soil, in the moist soil. So we discover that if we use cotton wool, it, it mimics the soil in the farm. So they'll come around and they feel like they're in the soil and it's moist, so they'll lay their eggs in the cotton wool. Then we, have, we pick the cotton wools with the eggs and incubate. So them, they know they've laid eggs in the soil, but us guys use that to collect. And then using the cotton wool, we incubate those eggs in a warm environment. We just make sure they are moist. And in a matter of time, they start hatching. And you start seeing very small, pinheads coming out and the rest is just feeding and making sure the place is clean you can see we've really cleaned our place just to remain very clean otherwise you run the risk of uh, hygienic issues and diseases rather upon maturity the crickets are harvested in mass by shaking off the trays into harvesting buckets or containers the crickets are then dipped into boiling hot water cleaned and finally dried from here, they are considered ready for processing or consumption. Harvesting is easy because, um, like you've seen, they, they can run very fast. So you cannot harvest one by one like they catch chicken. So here you have to harvest them in mass. So all we do is to pick the, the trays, just the way, you know, you wrap them around, they'll hide in the trays. So you pick all the trays and put them in your harvesting container. If it, it could be a plastic box, a plastic bag, and then you shake off the, the trays into your container and the crickets will drop off and you then take back your trays to the farm. After you have harvested, we kill them by just dipping them in hot water. Very hot water, boiling water, you dip them and in microseconds they are dead. And then you clean them nicely with clean water and then you can dry them.